who will be Tanzania's next president? Let's wait for the outcome. We are, we, are, we are hopeful that we shall win. Will he or will he not? Edward Loasa weighs his chances. We paid 53 billion outstanding loan on behalf of Serikali Mbukate ya Raila na, na Kibaki. Kenya's Eurobond saga And waiting for the Pope, Kenya's Nyeri County in the limelight again. It is October the 25th, 2015, Election Sunday. Now across the world, citizens from various countries took to the ballot today to decide their future. In Poland, the governing civic platform goes up against the Law and Justice Party, while in Guatemala, a comedian with political experience, Jimmy Morales, goes up against former First Lady Sandra Torres. In Argentina, today's election brings to an end Kirchnerismo, a political movement set up by former President Nestor Kirchner, who was then succeeded by his wife, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. Back home in Ivory Coast, 34,000 soldiers have been deployed around the country amid fears of election-related violence as economist Alassane Ouattara is widely expected to retain his seat. Meanwhile, citizens of Haiti are sifting through 53 candidates to replace incumbent Michel Martelly. And in Congo, Brazzaville, voters are deciding whether or not 71-year-old Dennis Sassungueso, who has already been in power for 31 years, should get another term in office. And of course, closer home, polling centers have now closed in Tanzania's most hotly contested election since its independence. And that is the focus on KTN Weekend Prime tonight. Good evening. I'm Yvonne Okwara-Matole, and our coverage of the transition in Tanzania begins now. Vitupeke metoweka. Tunataka wanetu wapate elimu. We're covering the length and breadth of Tanzania for you, my co-anchor tonight, John Alanamo, is in Dar es Salaam and joins us now live from there together with our entire team that we have sent there to cover this election. John, good evening. It's good to see you after such a long day out on the streets covering the polls in Tanzania. Paint a picture for us of what the day has been from when the polls opened up until this moment. Well, it's good to see you too, Yvonne, and good to see you underneath the shade of the Nyerere International Conference Center, sweltering heat here in Dar es Salaam, but nonetheless a fairly peaceful day by and large in Dar es Salaam and different parts of Tanzania. Uh, apart from a few incidents here in Ubungo that we'll get to in a moment, the voting went well, the turnout was extremely high. Um, of course, uh, 22.7 million registered voters, uh, not being anything to sniff at or shake a stick at in the biggest uh, country in East Africa, geographically and by population. Now we start in this evening or our reports this evening in the northeast of Tanzania that of course is Chadema Edward uh, Chadema's Edward Loasa's stronghold and he comes from there and uh, Mercy Kandia has been following the, that campaign and rather the vote counting there throughout the day and the voting throughout the day vote counting has of course started let's go to her now and see what happened throughout the day in northern Tanzania Arusha 
In line with the National Electoral Commission, most polling stations within Arusha were closed by four. Remember, the High Court made a ruling that there should be no gatherings within these polling stations, and Tanzanians did just that. They went to the polling stations, cast their votes, and went back home. The much-awaited day Sunday comes to an end, but Tanzanians have to wait for a little bit longer for the results. The long queues at the polling station was the clear indication that the was finally here. Many woke up early. 59-year-old Veronica Casaine was up by 4 in the morning. Ensuring that she had all the required documents, she made it to Ngarash Primary School. It's Sunday 25th, the Tanzania general election. Being the first woman to cast her vote, Veronica says her vote should make a difference to that which matters most to her. <laughs> maana ndani yake kuna changamoto za mabadiliko mimi ni mwalimu wa siku nyingi nitastaafu nitaacha walimu wenzangu nilihitaji mabadiliko hata kwenye uzee wangu ndio maana nika amka yani nikawa na ile moto wa kupiga kura sio kuja usiku hivi leo ni mara ya kwanza by 7 a.m. the voting had started. This is Monduli village in Arusha, Tanzania, the stronghold of Chadema's Edward Lowassa, the presidential candidate. He too was here, received by excited villagers. Lowassa, following the procedure, to cast his vote after two months of campaigns. It's a few minutes past 10 and Ukawa's presidential candidate Edward Lowassa has just cast his vote. Mwishimiwa, thank you for your time with us. You've been talking about Mabadiliko. Your sign is actually talking about change. What do you know how to do Mabadiliko? <laughs> do the Mabadiliko. Do, do try, do try. Do try this is what you're saying in terms of the Mabadiliko, Mwishimiwa. Tell us what Mabadiliko is it that you're talking about? Attitude. Change in, in doing things. Change in... in um, Casting things in our country. This is what we want to do. 23.2 million voters are expected to cast their votes in what has been termed as historic in Tanzania, a tight race among two presidential candidates and recording the highest number of voters. At the polling stations, voters were clear of the role of the next government set to rule for five years. <laughs> Ah, kwa hiyo naona watanisaidia yule mgeni mchagua tuna shida ya barabara umeme kwa hiyo tunaomba serikali inapoingia madarakani ambaye itaichagua basi angalize hilo kuweza kuwafikisha wale mavu kwenye pia kura the hope seen on their faces Arusha town had minimal activity most businesses remained closed the says presidential elections results would be released three to four days after Sunday's voting. Keep it KTN News for with rigor to the Tanzanian elections as it unfolds. My name is Masi Kandia for KTN News in Arusha, Tanzania. All right, let's come back to Dar es Salaam, where much as there were few and far between, there were incidents of sporadic violence as well as complaints about the manner in which the election was being taken, uh, was being carried out here in Dar es Salaam. Ben Kitili went round the entire city for the entire day and got quite a bit of insights, especially from Ubungo and following up on Chadem and press statement complaining about vote stuffing as well as other electoral offences. Let's go to that now. Tanzanians voted Sunday in what is expected to be the tightest presidential and general elections in the East African nation's history. Voting opened at 7 a.m. local time in most of the 65,105 polling stations across the country with the voting process moving pretty fast in many centers. Chaguzi wa leo tumaliza salama. Leo tunatarajia kumchagua mtu tumpendaye. Namshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kutufikisha siku ya leo. But there was tension in a number of polling stations in Tanzania's commercial capital, Dar es Salaam, at Kimara stopover polling station. 
The voting process was stopped due to supposed lack of ballot papers causing some of the voters to protest along the busy Dar es Salaam Morogoro Road. Now where I'm standing, this is a stopover a polling station by uh, the National Elections Commission. As you can see behind me, there's a bit of unrest there uh, by some uh, voters who have not been able to cast their ballots. Now it started at around uh, three hours ago, that is at around at, uh, 11 a.m. in the morning, where some of the voters were able to come here. They were given the civic ward ballot papers were given the parliamentary ballot papers but they were told that the presidential ballot papers are not there incredible uh, admission or you know explanation there by the official kuja hapa stop over tangu saa 11 nimeamka nyumbani nimeacha shughuli zangu kuja kupiga kura kama haki yangu ya msingi lakini tumefika hapa wakaleta karatasi kwanza nusu kama karatasi 200 tuna watu karibia 1000 hapa Tuna vikundi viwili. Mm. UDP na hapa stopova mjini. Yes. Lakini cha kushangaza tukasema haiwezekani sisi kupiga kura wakati karatasi ya kura za kutosha. Oh Walisema God. kwamba wataenda kutuletea karatasi. Jamani. Badala yake tumepata vifaru, mm -hmm. magari ya polisi, yeah. waandishi wengi wa habari mpaka ninavyokueleza sasa hivi ni sio ni saa ngapi? Saa 9 nafikiri, saa 10 kasoro. Hatujapiga kura tuko hapa tunahang. By 4 p.m. Voting had not begun at Kimara stopover polling center. Sasa tunatuambia ya rais amna, ya mbunge amna, ya diwani amna. Tutachaguaje haki yetu sisi? Tunaomba tume uchaguzi rubuva tuone kama sisi na sisi binadamu tunataka haki yetu. Kwanza jambo la msingi tume ya taifa haitendi haki kwa mwananchi. Sababu ingeleta karatasi mapema za kutosha. Za kutosha. The Tanzanian's electoral body, the National Elections Commission, later sought to explain the huge delay. Tukafumina kumi, baadhi ya wadao walisema, tusia tunatumia walimu wa watu mishu wa uma, kuenda kusimamia upeajie kura. Kwa matusema tangazo, yote mwenye sifa, ambazo tunasizi nafaa, wezi kwa ajiliwa. Tukawa ajili katika menu hayo kwa ni mpurugenzi wa almashawi ya kawambeni suamizi ya uchaguzi, ya kawajili ya hawa vijana. Hasa jana usiku satisa wameitua, wakonza mashapu ya fedha zao, zazia za kutumikia, wakawa wameitua sawa wakabiziwe hivyo vifaa ili wapipeleke kwa saranga pale na kimarabi pale na kimara stopova wale vijana wakasema hapana sisi kiwango cha fedha ambacho umechitupa na walisha saini mkataba na tume kwa ni, na, 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 na msawizi uchaguzi kwa niaba ya tume na fedha umesharipo wakasema sinu nataka mtupe shingi laki moja moja kila siku mbana leo laki moja na kishu laki moja tukambia hatuwezi kuwapa hata kama tungiwasa ya tuwapa saisi sati sa usiku tuwapeni kutoka wapi vijana wala kamua kufanya vurugu kwa hivifanya vurugu ni kwa mba livunja baadhi ya maboksi ya kupigia kula waka pasua baadhi ya maboksi ya levi ya vitutuli Voting had to be extended at that polling station, but this was fodder for Edward Loasa's Chadema party, which is crying foul, accusing the Elections Commission of trying to rig the election. Neck maintains it was a genuine mistake. The voters are in poll with research analysts expecting well over 80% turnout, a big improvement from the 2010 elections where there was less than 50% voter turnout. The National Elections Commission is set to begin announcing the election results Monday at 9 p.m. local time, promising to have the full official results in three days' time. Ben Kitili, KTN News, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Well, election malpractices have been part of Chadema's campaign and campaign rhetoric uh, throughout the campaign period, some of which seem to have played out today, of course, next saying that those were genuine mistakes. Now, I spoke to the chairman of the East African Community's Observer Mission. Kenyans will know him, former vice president of the Republic of Kenya, Moody Awori, about those specific election malpractices alleged as they might be, and started by asking him what the hallmark of this election has been for him and the observer mission that he leads I think I have been very encouraged to see that uh, elections can be prepared and started and uh, you know go on so peacefully. You know, we have been here for more than a week and we have been talking to various stakeholders, the National Election Commission, the security, we have talked to the parties and they seemed to be well prepared. 
this morning and the whole day has shown to us that indeed they were well prepared. Yeah. We were at a polling station a few minutes before opening. By then they were not only there, but all the materials required were there. The voters were preparing themselves and simply waiting for the time to come. So I'm, pre I'm impressed. All right. The, the, it seems to have gone on fairly peacefully in a majority of the areas that we've been to as well here in Dar es Salaam. Uh, but for Ubungo, Ubungo being uh, the hallmark of one or two other polling stations in which there were no presidential ballots, um, as well as parliamentary and civic. Um, as an observer, how do you judge this uh, with respect to whether this is an issue of preparation or it's an issue that perhaps lends itself to more political um, use um, as being alleged by Loasa and Chadema? Regrettably, I wasn't there. So it's really difficult for me to make any observation for an area which I did not observe. But uh, there, there are these issues that do emerge in elections. How, how as an observer, do you uh, make that balance between what is fact as, as being a logistical challenge and what is fact as being a, one that's instigated politically? And does this make any, does, is this something that you consider in your final report? Well, we don't know whether it has been instigated politically or whether it's logistic. I don't think there is any country anywhere in the world where po uh, uh, elections are held and completed without hiccups here and there. Yeah. Because I didn't particularly uh, 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 observe that one, the observation is simply that it is logistic. My observation is simply that as a growing democracy, we want to try and to do everything we can not to give one party or the other a reason to believe that things were weighted against them or in favor. All right. As an observer, would uh, talking to John Pombe Magufuli and the CCM campaign as well as Edward Loasa be something that you do and do on a regular basis to ensure that these kinds of uh, opinions uh, do not perhaps filter into the public? Yes, absolutely. In fact, what happens in Tanzania can happen in Uganda, can happen in Kenya, and we don't want that. This is the reason why we are here as East African commu community because we want to observe and we want to see where challenges are so that in our final report we can say perhaps second such a thing could have been done this way we would like tanzania to learn from those challenges for the f next elections we want the other areas in the community who will soon be having their uh, elections also to learn from a situation like you have just portrayed. The tenets of uh, democratic elections seem to be um, well observed in many parts of Tanzania, although we are in an election cycle as the East African community. In the space of two years, we're going to have elections um, in Uganda, in, in Rwanda, in Kenya as well. And in those countries, these same tenets do not seem to be respected at this point in time. As an observer mission, what would your mandate be in a situation where there clearly, are, um, there, there clearly is a disrespect to these very same tenets? I think as an observer, we have to try and put a lot of emphasis. We observe these tenets throughout. Because why are we here as observers from East African community is because we want to remove these challenges because our aim is one to get political federation we cannot have political federation if there are differences in the various ways of doing our political matters your recommendations seem more like 
Well, that interviewer, Bridget Atis, may have been still spoke about a number of issues around this election. Yvonne, lots happening here in Tanzania. Just a brief update about what's going to be taking place here tomorrow. Uh, just parliamentary and presidential ballots are going to be focused on from tomorrow. Nothing happening, of course, uh, at the podium here and in the hall here at the Nyerere International Conference Center. Still more to cover from the Tanzanian election, but let first let me take it back to Nairobi and to you, Yvonne. Thank you very much, John Alan Namu from Dar es Salaam. We'll be back to you in just a moment. But let's take a look at some numbers that are coming from another election observer group. That's the Coalition of Election Monitoring and Observation in Tanzania. They collected this data from 6,444 observers. Um, so let's look at some of the questions they asked. And uh, we'd hesitate that these questions were asked uh, say at around noon and halfway through polling day today so the situation may have changed somewhat across the day so these are just some of the questions to gain today um, this was the question they asked were there political party polling agents at your polling station remember they're supposed to monitor how the election is going for the support of the CCM 98% of them said yes they were present comes to 75 who said yes for Ukawa that's the opposition coalition it was 6,351 others it was about 4,585 so all in all, you can see a very positive feeling of those who were voted, those who were then polled after that, about presence of polling agents at the various polling stations. I want to move to the next issue now, um, and which was about uh, voting materials that were missing. Remember, that happened in uh, certain areas, which John Alanamo asked uh, former Vice President Moody Awori about. Like they said, largely, um, this was something that was very small. 10% of them said yes in certain areas uh, the polling stations were missing and we do hear that the National Electoral Commission in Tanzania has postponed voting in some polling stations to tomorrow. 5,921, that's about 90% of those that were polled there saying that the voting materials were present both for the ward, parliamentary and presidential um, seats or rather for all of them uh, that were there that were present and uh, we will be speaking of course to those there. I, th I believe we have another question uh, that we went into. Yeah, was the polling station 85% said no, so showing uh, that uh, voters in Tanzania had a relatively easy time finding the voters register and finding their names in the register as well, which is 18%, that's 1,208 of those respondents saying yes, the voters register was missing. So you can see largely, and these are from voters who went and actually cast their ballots out of the 22.7 million voters. Now this of course is just a sample. And uh, in just a moment, we will be speaking to Dr. Lupa Ramadani, and he's from this Coalition for Election Monitoring and Observation in Tanzania, to just get a feel also of some of the numbers there. But I believe we have two more. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look at those. Yes. What time? Oh, this is an important one. How could I forget this one? What time did voting begin at your polling station? 94% um, 90, uh, said polling opened quite early, between 7 and 7.30, with just 4% saying um, that polling stations opened opened by 8 p.m. and about 2% saying it was from 8 p.m. onwards. Remember, um, there was that region that we talked about uh, and uh, Ben Kitili was there talking about the polling station opening at 8 o'clock. Hours into that, the um, uh, president after that, by around 3 o'clock, there were no uh, ballot papers in that region. And finally, how many polling officials were present? Between 1 and 5? 73% said so. Between 5 and 10, that number goes down. And of course, more than 11, that's 4%. And we just want to remind you at this point that the rules in Tanzania are that no polling station should have more than 450 uh, voters assigned to it just to make the election process really fast. Uh, though there were some reports in some areas, according to Chadema earlier today, that some polling stations had up to 800, if not more, uh, registered voters, of course, making the process quite tedious. Like you said, we'll be speaking to Dr. Lupa Ramadani from the Coalition of Election Monitoring and Observation in Tanzania, as well as Victor Rateng, for Victor Rateng from Toweza, East Africa. Remember, they're the ones who gave us that poll um, a little over a month ago. 
uh, regarding the elections in Tanzania. So we'll see if the numbers have changed somewhat over the last one month. But we want to take you back to John Alanamu, who's in uh, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, for more. Great time we're talking to officials from Suaweza. They are uh, the officials, perhaps the only officials, have been polling consistently around election-related issues in Tanzania. And specific to our next story, it's a region that will not contribute that much to the overall vote tally in Tanzania in this election. But with respect to the unity of Tanzania, it's been referred to by many analysts as the tail that wags that unity question always tested at every election. Muhammad Ali was, or rather still is, in, in Zanzibar and gives us an update on what took place there today. Amid anxiety about security, long queues of voters began gathering hours before dawn, with the polling centers opening on time at 7 a.m. for presidential and parliamentary elections here in the island of Zanzibar, in a race that not only promises to be a tight one, but one that analysts say it has given the ruling party a run for its money. <laughs> Inatosha tukoishi vizuri tu katika nchi tuwe na usalama ndio maisha ni vizuri basi inatosha mambo yote nimeshakamilisha kama yalivyopangwa na utaratibu ulivyopangiliwa nyumbani ende nikapumzike sijaona hitilafu yote mpangilio ni mzuri kama ulivyopangwa mimi nataka mabadiliko ya nchi tuweze kuenda katika mfumo tutakaopata na sisi maendeleo CAF presidential aspirant Maalim Saif, who cast his vote in Garagara Amani, says he is confident of victory. Ah, mimi, mimi sina wasuasu wa ushindi. Kama kila siku nivangisema, nikuwa uchaguzi huu udaendeshwa kwa haki. Tuta uchagua huru na wazi. Sina wasuasu. His rival from the ruling party Chama Chama Pinduzi, Ali Mohamed Shein, casted his vote at a primary school in Bungi, 20 kilometers south of Zanzibar. Mandarizi mazuri. Tangu alba za panda utabu zi. Mpaka pundi zi mpia kura. Hakula tatizo. Kila mtu watapata natasa mpia kura. Ni ushahidi kwa mbame ni mpia kuru kulivu. Na waote, hivu ni mpanya mimi, na watafanya mimi. Na naamini wakija onyo tarifi. kama ambao tunazungumza katika kampeni hizi takwimu za ushindi zimezungumza chama chetu wamefanya press conference mara mbili jana mara mwisho wameeleza kwa takwimu na hata katika baadhi ya magazeti nimeandika na mimi na matumaini hayo matumaini tashinda pia tashinda kwa kushinda sio kama mwaka 2022 Residents of Zanzibar are however not leaving anything to chance and are putting precautionary measures just in case the outcome of the election may trigger unrest. Their houses have been stocked with enough food to last them for a few days if they will be forced to remain indoors. Security has been beefed up and around polling stations and on the streets of Zanzibar with the opposition claiming possible rigging plans by the ruling party. Nimepata kwamba katika kituo kimoja cha shule ya Jangombe imeingizwa kisanduku kishapigwa kura tayari. Na wakala wetu alipohoji kule msomo cha kuzambe haimhusu akatokea askari akasema achiwe yeye lakini masanduku bado mpaka naambiwa ilikuwemo bado hajatolewa kwa hivyo kwa habari ambazo tulikuwa nazo ni kwamba kura fake zimepigwa nyingi sana na watafuta njia sasa tu kusimukiza kuingia nimepiga kura nimeridhika asilimia fulani kwa sababu naona walio kuwepo hapa wengi si wapiga kura wa hapa ni watu ambao walioletwa tu wafikosi kuja kupiga kura ambao hatuwatambui hata mmoja ukikosi vya usalama viliopo aina JKU walisiki kabisa kupiga kura hapa lakini tumewaona kwamba wameletwa wengi sana na kwa hivyo wameingia katika vyumba vya kupiga kura na wanapiga kura kama kawaida tunaofya kwamba maamuzi 
kuanzia Zanzibar hataheshimiwa. Hayatoheshimiwa kwa sababu tumeambiwa ni watu wa shehia tu. Lakini sasa tunaletewa nje ya shehia waje wa kupiga kura hapa. Kwa vile naona kama huu si uchaguzi wa haki unaotakiwa. Watu wa vikosi wanapiga lakini sio kama walivyokuja mara hii. Mara hii wameletwa wengi sana wengi sana wameleta mpaka sasa wapigaji kura wangu ndani ya kituo changu hichi cha Mto Pepo jimbo uh, shehia ya uwanja garagara wako salama unaona mpaka sasa wanaingia kwenye vituo vya kupiga kura kwa usalama bila ugomvi bila tafrani wamepanga line kila mtu anajua utaratibu unavyoenda hata na makala wetu wameridhika na zoezi zima la kwanza ili la upigishaji kura This is going to be the toughest but most exciting elections in the country's history. Polls closes at 4 p.m. and elections officials say they expect the results of the presidential race by tomorrow afternoon. And for the rival factors here, victory may go either way, but what is important is for peace to prevail during and after the polls. The elections are over now and what we are waiting for are the results and the choice of Zanzibar's half a million voters. Muhammad Ali, KTN News, Zanzibar. Muhammad Ali there giving us an update on what's going on in Zanzibar. Now back here in Dar es Salaam, not much happening here at the Nyerere International Conference Center, specifically this hall which is fairly empty right now, but by tomorrow at 9 o'clock when the National Election Commission will have its first press briefing to announce the first set of results. Remember, just parliamentary and presidential for now, civic election results have been put up for some time so that there can be full on these two that's when that first press briefing will take place. Of course, KTN News will be live here throughout the day until that announcement of the next president of the Republic of Tanzania. Remember, whoever is announced president in Tanzania constitutionally will remain president. There is no room constitutionally for electoral challenges. So once the chairman of the NEC announces that, that is it for the next five years, an important crucial uh, even uh, decision being made there by Tanzanians and being announced by the National Electoral Commission. We will be here to do so and listen, and listen in and give you that as and when it comes by. Right now, that's it for us from Tanzania tonight. But remember to stay with us on KTN News for that update tomorrow. Let's take a short break now on KTN Weekend Prime. My name is John Alan Amu. Have a good night. want to focus a little bit on Tanzania and on those numbers uh, that we had shown you earlier from the Coalition of Election Monitoring and Observation in Tanzania. And like we promised, live on Skype from Dar es Salaam, we have Dr. Lupa Ramadani who joins us this evening. Dr. Tari, thank you very much for making the time to be with us tonight. We just want to focus on your numbers for a moment. Um, and there was uh, the issue of voter education and the level of awareness um, of the rules of the game. To what extent do you think this was done before uh, Tanzanians went to the poll today? Yeah, no, no, I, I, I think I still have... Uh, uh, yes, uh, could you say that again, please? Yes. Uh, at, all yes. right, we were asking uh, about some of the numbers uh, that you gave um, yes. today and I think in the run-up to the election, specifically to do with voter yes. education. Do you think there was enough yes. voter education for those in Tanzania in the run-up to the election today? Um, our overall uh, observation is that um, although uh, voter education was, was provided, uh, the, 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 the concerned institutions and especially the National Electric Commission needed to do more on voter education because uh, there were some uh, shortcomings and the, the efforts that we saw uh, we think they were not uh, adequate enough. So we, we, we are concerned about the level of voter education. But then we have, uh, we have been talking about this that 
uh, voter education should also be uh, linked with the civic education because uh, as the level of civic education goes down, then uh, voter education is also uh, affected. Yeah, quite yeah. key. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the numbers of the voters. Huh? Women and youth are making yes. up a big proportion of the electorate. We know that women are making up 53% of registered voters in Tanzania. Um, and, you know, the youth yes. who are aged between 18 and 35 making up about 57%. Um, to what extent yes. do you think, then, they're likely to affect the sway of the vote? Women and youth are quite key in Tanzania. Ah, yes, 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 they are. Yeah. Um, yes, you, you are right. The, uh, the, the, the impact is, is, is likely to be felt uh, because if you look even at, at the election, it was centered on, on, on the youth. Many of the challenges that uh, politicians tried to, 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 to promise were, 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 were concerned about the, the issues of the youth. Issues of, of employment, issues of, of, of education, issues of, of training, and even many of the issues of, of, of health and uh, things like that. So by any means, given the, 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 the demography and, and the, the statistics that were provided, yes, the youth and the, and the women will continue. Actually, it's not, just for, it's not unique for this election. That has been the case even in previous elections. That uh, women and, uh, and the youth have been used as a political capital by, by, by politicians. It's only unfortunate that uh, women and the youth are, have, have seen to be used as a bridge by, 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 by politicians and uh, they are not uh, very much on, 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 on the contesting side. They are very much participating as as voters. Yes, and uh, you bring yeah. up that, which is going to be my next question, uh, in terms of the number of women uh, who are vying for yes. elective posts in Tanzania. Well, it's improved somewhat, from 2010, where there about 191 yes. women to around 234 now. Uh, have the women yes. put up with the men in terms of participating in the election and vying for seats? Yes. Um, there, 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 there could be so many explanations to that. Uh, firstly, it is the nature of the electoral system. Our electoral system is, um, is the uh, first past the post. It is a very competitive. As though these individuals are, are still uh, sponsored by the political parties, but still. Uh, it is highly individualistic. Uh, people have to prepare themselves. There's stiff competition in private competition. There's stiff uh, interpersonal competition. And uh, in many cases, it is simply intimidating uh, uh, to women. So that is part of the explanation for that. But uh, another explanation uh, could also be that uh, political parties have tended to be very traditional because we know uh, uh, there is a, a system of uh, women's special seats, the affirmative action, and uh, that has come with a disadvantage. It has an advantage that it has at least increased the number or the visibility of women in politics. But the disadvantage is that now when women want to show up and then Men will simply say, no, 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 but you have got your sl slots, you have got your special seats, what are you doing yeah. in our constituents? So that has been a, a, a disadvantage of, of women's special seats, and I think that is one area where the new constitution was, was addressing, that to do away with the, with the women's special seats and to make sure that women compete with men in the constituency. All right, very interesting insights, especially seats for women in Kenya. Uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Dr. Lupa Ramadani, who is from the Coalition of Election Monitoring and Observation in Tanzania. We hope to be able to speak with you again, even as we continue with our coverage of this election. Thank you very much, sir, for your time tonight. And we're getting quite a bit of feedback on that issue. We'll be reading in your tweets. Wesley Rono, thank you for tweeting in. You say great coverage following your updates. Uh, here in Arusha, and then we also have Felista Kioni saying here in Singida.
so far all has gone well. Tanzanians are just waiting for the results. So keep your comments coming in. The hashtag we're using is transition in Tanzania. We will get uh, to that in just a moment as we carry on here on KTN News. Let's come back to the country for a moment. Here in Kenya, authorities are saying 15 al-Shabaab terrorists in Somalia. KDF says the attack was mounted on an operation base used by the militants across River Juba in Yantoi. During the Sunday morning operation, two boats used by the militants to cross River Juba were also destroyed. According to KDF spokesman Colonel David Obonio, the attack was part of the ongoing operations along the Juba corridor. The operations meant to prepare for the capture of Jalib, the remaining Al-Shabaab headquarters in Loa Shabele. Yantui is strategically situated across River Juba and has been the main base that the terrorists used to cross the river from Jalib and infiltrate into Loa Juba. Let's go to that controversy now about Kenya's 122 billion shilling euro bond that has kicked off a huge political storm. The ruling Jubilee coalition is angered by the latest statement from opposition leader Raila Odinga that top government officials are trading with the money borrowed from Europe. Aaron Cheng reports. The Office of the Control of Budget does not have any mandate in procuring any debt by the government. That is the statement by the controller of budget, Agnes Odhiambo, that ignited a national debate as to whether something fishy could be going on with 122 billion shillings the country borrowed from Europe last year. Mr. Odhiambo said the money from the Eurobond was deposited in an offshore account over which she had no power. The proceeds of the sovereign bond were deposited in a special account to which the control of budget not a signatory. It's the opinion of the office that there is need to enact a legislation to anchor in law the management of the special account. Opposition leader Raila Odinga, who has been in a war of words, latched onto the revelation saying that the Jubilee government was in fact trading with the money and that one top Jubilee government official had in fact earned 34 billion shillings as profits from the bond. <laughs> But the governing Jubilee coalition is not taking this lying down. Spokesman of the coalition, who is also leader of majority in the National Assembly, Eden Duale, says Israel's assertion is hot air. Appearing before Parliament, the lady whose role is to ensure the government sticks to its budget had alluded to the fact that the government was operating special accounts tucked away in foreign countries, making it difficult to examine all its expenditure. Odhiambo also disclosed that part of the Eurobond had been received, but Treasury has not been clear on what the money has been used for. By virtue of Article 206, sub Article 4, read together with Article 201 of the Constitution, the control of budget must authorize the repayment of any loan by the government. But that controversy has now degenerated into politics as usual, with Duale now warning the Railag Brigade to keep, to keep President Uhuru and his deputy William Ruto out of his battles. <laughs> The issuance of the euro bond by the International Finance Corporation was expected to ease interest rates in Kenya, is the biggest economy, but with the election fever catching up with Kenya nearly one and a half years before the due date, there is no telling how far this euro bond route. Aaron Ocheng, KTN News. Let's now go to that much-anticipated visit by Pope Francis to Africa next month. The Pope, who is expected in Kenya late next month, will conduct...
country. The Pope will use the same altar which was used during the historic beatification of Sister Irene Nyada Stefani in the central county of Nyeri. The altar, which is over 100 years old, has been inspected and is set to be transported to Nairobi next week. With just a month before the head of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, makes a historic visit to Kenya, preparations for that visit are gaining momentum by the day. Volunteers at the Demis Sisters Community Center in Kangemi have been working on an attire that the Pope will wear during his tour of the country. And now, even the altar that Pope Francis will use to celebrate Mass at the University kilometers away in Nyeri. But the distance is half the story of the altar. This altar, which is stored at the Madari Mission Complex, is not your ordinary one. Chocolate in color and made of hardwood, it is more than a century old. It was constructed by the Consolata missionaries soon after their arrival in Kenya over a hundred years ago. This altar is a very historical altar. We have deliberately come for it. It was designed and crafted like this very many years ago. The base of the altar has various engravings, among them the Holy Eucharist, a bird feeding its hatchlings, a dove, a fish, and a lamp. It also has Latin inscriptions, which loosely translate to, You saved us, Lord, by your blood. The altar is eight feet long, three and a half feet wide, Measurements recommended. It is ready. We will do some touch-up. Uh, we find a bit scratches here and there, but when it reaches Nairobi, we'll bring it to the best possible shape to be used. It's the right measurement, the right height, the right width, fitting very well for the papal celebration. And the Mass by the Pope will be the second historic event in which the altar will be used. This same altar was consecrated for use during the beatification of Blessed Sister Nyaada at the Dead and Kimathi grounds in Nyeri in May this year. The altar was inspected by a team led by the coordinator of the Pope's visit. It will be transported to Nairobi sometime next week. And again, apart from the one million people who will attend the Mass at, uh, in Nairobi, apart from Kenya there will be more than 30 television stations and 260 radio stations across the world beaming all the Pope's events in Kenya live. So we'll have billions of people following the events in Kenya. Pope Francis will make a three-day visit to Kenya beginning on the 25th of next month before heading to Uganda and later to the Central African Republic in his first tour of Africa. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Like we said, it's election Sunday today. In Congo, Brazzaville, voters went to the polls earlier today to decide on whether or not President Sassou Nguesso should get a third term. The referendum was largely boycotted by opposition groups that are opposed to Nguesso's third term bid. 71-year-old Sassou Nguesso has already ruled the oil-producing country for 31 of the past 36 years and is expected to stand if permitted. He won disputed elections in 2002 and 2009, and under the present constitution, term limits and his age bar him as the latest long-serving African president to pursue legal action to prolong his grip on power. He says only the Congolese can make that decision. Today is a very important day for the people of Congo because they will demonstrate to the world that they are a free and sovereign people and that on this important matter touching on their nation and their future, only they can make a decision. So another election happening in Africa today and voting has just concluded in parts of Ivory Coast as the nation seeks to elect a new president. Incumbent President Alassane Ouattara is seeking re-election in the West African nation, which is the world's leading cocoa producer. At a polling station in the country's commercial capital, Abidjan, incumbent President Alassane Ouattara casts his ballot. This is an election that analysts predict will give him a second term in office. But he is only one of the more than 6 million Ivorians who register to take part in the vote at some 20,000 polling stations. 
It is a great day for Ivory Coast, and so we must go through with this election with peace and serenity and come together to face other challenges awaiting the Ivorian nation. Three of the ten opposition candidates, including Charles Conan Barney, a former prime minister, withdrew from the election, leaving another former prime minister, Pascal Afingwe's son, as Watera's main challenger. Obviously, the biggest challenge is absenteeism, so we must do everything to avoid having a high absentia rate. Levels. Around 3,000 died in violence following the latest election in 2010 which pitted Waterer against former strongman Lauren Bagbo who is currently facing charges at the International Criminal Court. We have deployed more than 30,000 Ivorian men and nearly 6,000 UN forces to guarantee the safety of this election. Ivorians want peace. They want to get out of what we experienced in 2010. They really want to move ahead with prosperity, progress, peace, and uh, for us to get together and work for the best of a nation. Thank you very much. Under Watera's leadership, the West African nation has re-emerged as a rising economic star on the continent. I want total peace in Ivory Coast. Observers say a peaceful election for Ivory Coast would reassure the investors currently flooding into the country, the world's top cocoa grower. Zinze Kibiku, KTN News. Welcome back. It's just coming to 10 p.m. in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, the commercial capital of Tanzania, where telling of votes is beginning, as it is in many parts of that East African nation, that went to the polls today. More than 22 million Tanzanians were expected to vote in the election that will usher in the country's fifth president. The vote generally went on peacefully, uh, but sporadic violence and allegations of fraud were reported in parts of the country. The Electoral Commission is expected to announce the first set of results from tomorrow morning. The final vote is not expected until after three or four days. And we want to um, continue the analysis of that. And if you remember, around the 22nd, a little over a month ago, we had Victor Ateng here, who's from Toeza, East Africa, the senior program officer, to talk about those opinion polls that had come out at the time um, and was putting John Magufuli in the lead. But you also talked about a number of issues, you know, uh, health, education, access to water, uh, but just give us a sense um, of what has transpired over the last month since we had you here. Have many of the issues rang true? Have they not? What's your assessment after now the voting is complete? Um, thank you so much for inviting me to the studio and uh, uh, represent, uh, inviting Toweza to talk about these issues. Uh, we did the poll about um, uh, 48 days ago, we completed, that is the last day when we interviewed the last person, and we released that poll on 22nd of September, and what we did um, find out from that poll is uh, citizens were talking about various issues are, as most pressing, and on the three main ones were health, uh, water, and education. Whether that has changed since the time we released the poll and today, um, I don't think there could be, because politicians have been on the campaign uh, trail uh, between then and now, so uh, the most important thing I think they have been doing is trying to tell Tanzanians what they are going to do to address, to address those, those particular issues. issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very issue driven, wouldn't yeah. you say? Um, yes, because the two horses are uh, campaigning, uh, uh, like the, op the opposition candidate, uh, sorry, um, Ukawa candidate is campaigning on the platform of change, you know, and uh, the, uh, the incumbent, as we can call him, I, I don't know whether both are incumbents <laughs> because they just, uh, one is in CCM and yeah. the other one just left CCM the other day, yeah. but um, he's seen by many of the uh, uh, people we polled as a hard worker. So I, I, I'm not sure whether this is something that uh, has been taken by the voters. So, but we are going to be able to see this tomorrow. Uh, people who vote, why yeah. they voted for but those two candidates yeah, especially. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and you made an interesting uh, point about both candidates uh, speaking and standing on a platform of change. One of them, Loasa, just left CCM literally months to the election yes. in June, mm -hmm. July mm -hmm. this year. Yes. Uh, and you remember he was dogged by a political uh, a corruption scandal not yes. too long ago. Let's speak first about Loasa. Do you think he's been able to turn himself around? 
Well, and that's the main reason he has to campaign uh, telling Tanzanians that he's going to bring about the change. In 2008, when he was Prime Minister, there was this power scandal between uh, in the Richmond uh, Development Company from Houston, Texas, and Tanesco, and he had to resign. And that has really haunted him up to this election. So whether Tanzanians who are voting for him are going to uh, put that change mm -hmm. is one thing that another research might have to establish. Yeah, yeah. And, and all will be known, I suppose, as the votes continue to come in. Uh, the two of them uh, really were in CCM. Um, like you said, you were calling yeah, the two so, of them so in I don't know who is, it's, it's uh, very uh, hard to tell. Do you think people are able to distinguish between the two? Unless you do some serious analysis, yeah. it is very hard to tell in the minds of the voters who they are treating as an incumbent. In, in, yeah. Um, yeah, because I am in CCM and the other person has left CCM. So who is the incumbent? It's very hard for, for, for me to tell, but mm -hmm. I would be very interested in knowing what Tanzanians uh, thought about that when they were deciding whether to vote for Magufuli or Lowassa. Right. Yeah. Uh, voter turnout also. Could you talk to us about turnout over the last uh, elections? We don't know the numbers yet now, um, but what have the numbers been like in past elections? Um, just like many Tanzanians, um, I'm, and, and, uh, I'm looking forward to the results tomorrow so that we can see how the voter turnout is going to be mm -hmm. because this has been said by many analysts as one of those very uh, competitive elections. Going back to history, uh, the last three elections, in, 2000, in, in the year 2000 we had 84% voter turnout. Wow. That is of the people who are registered to vote. Yes. Uh, in 2005 we had 72%, so you see it went down. Mm -hmm. And then in 2010 we had 43% wow. voter turnout. That's so a significant drop, drop over, yes. so over the years. Um, uh, but it will be very interesting to see because even when we did our own poll uh, in Tanzania, it showed that many Tanzanians were registered to vote while expressing the view that they were going to turn out to vote. So I would really like to see that tomorrow when the results are, uh, are out. Okay, uh, a profile of the voters, we know majority are women and youth. Um, obviously, campaigning is over now and, you know, the, the voters have decided. But how important is uh, this demographic in it? And do you think the candidates were able to acquit themselves well to the women and the youth who form up a big bulk of the electorate? You see, there's no significant age difference between the two candidates. One is 62 and the other one mm. is 56, uh, mm. right? Mm -hmm. A six-year difference. So, Sub, yeah. yeah, so whether or not the voters were considering this as a factor is, is, is one thing. But although when we did the poll, uh, it showed some significant differences uh, in terms of those who are supporting both candidates. Uh, there was uh, um, a higher support of, from among the young people towards the uh, Okawa candidate, uh -huh. but not significantly uh, much to, to cause uh, worry for, for the other candidate. Uh -huh. uh, there, were, there was more support from the okay. and even more uh, educated people, uh, sorry, less educated people supporting him. So, but these were very uh, small uh, differences that cannot count uh, in this case. Were you able to find out why they were supporting the candidates they were, why the women were, you know, sort of uh, favoring Magufuli? And in, uh, in general terms, yeah. uh, for the entire population that mm -hmm. we voted, uh, that we polled, um, people who supported Magufuli uh, thought he's a very uh, hard-working person. Mm -hmm. And those who supported Luasa, uh, of course, probably because he was already campaigning on the platform of change, gave that particular reason. We are going to vote for him because he's, 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 he's somebody who is going, to, he's going to bring change in Tanzania. Right. Yeah. Change versus hard work. Change versus hard work. I don't know which one, uh, how different All right. uh, yeah. they could be because when I'm hard, if I'm hard working, I'm, I'm going to do much more to yeah. transform assessment of everything from the time you um, interviewed the last person 48 days ago mm -hmm. um, to all of this happening now. Just give us your overall assessment as we conclude. Well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very concerned that, uh, I would, uh, I'm not concerned, but I'm curious as to whether Tanzanians who voted today, early today, uh, thought that both candidates had incumbents, you know, like uh, did they have that in mind? Mm -hmm. uh, did they take into consideration that both candidates just came, uh, one is in CCM and the other one left CCM? So, did, who did they treat as the income? That is one thing I'm really concerned about. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be very much interested in asking them uh, after this. Right. And then the other thing is, uh, how much of a difference did the, uh, the age factor okay. uh, contribute to the voting today? Whom do they consider older or younger? Because we know that.
Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister, and right. uh, the President are right now. Uh, the other thing is uh, how, how much of a factor is um, the track record? Because we know, for uh -huh. example, Magufuli has not had some uh, al allegations against him. Mm -hmm. If they're there, they're not so prominent as the one for uh, the other LOAS. Because yes. if, if somebody has a scandal and they resign, uh, did they ta take that into consideration that this is somebody who has actually had some serious allegations against him? And did that determine whether they are going to vote for him uh -huh. or not? And if they voted for him, what was the other factor that made them vote for him? Right. Those are questions that I'm still asking myself uh, as a person yeah. uh, who, who is in Africa, you know. Okay, yeah. all right. And some interesting issues all will be revealed. It's all starting tomorrow and the yes. National mm -hmm. Electoral Commission promises us that we'll have all the results, hopefully, uh, by end of business day, Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, we thank you very much for your time and for always being available and for availing uh, your research and your knowledge to us. Victor Rateng is a senior program officer for Tuaweza East Africa. We'll continue, of course, to speak to him and members of his team as we watch the events unfolding in Tanzania now that the voting is complete. And as Tanzanians wait for that announcement from their electoral body, there is a group that claims they can tell the winner even before the count is out. We're talking about the witch doctors who have apparently been a great attraction to politicians seeking to understand what the future holds for them. It is peak time for Dr. Manyaunyao, as is popularly known in Tanzania. The black magician is best known to predict election results. particular contender who pays homage to him lakini kuna hawa wengine wakubwa wanagombea ubunge wanagombea uraisi wakati mwingine wanatuma wakilishi wao unaona lakini wewe unakwenda kukutana naye sawa uko sehemu ambayo yeye yuko kutokana na na yeye amekuwa ni mtu ambaye anafaa anafahamika sana kwa hiyo paka sasa hivi malaki hatuwezi kuachana sawa lazima tu tunaendelea kuashiriana mpaka tuhakikishe kwamba uchaguzi Umekuisha. Tanzanian politicians have been warned to steer clear of witchcraft after the nation's parliament had lawmakers could be involved in a wave of attacks on albinos whose body parts are prized in black magic rituals. Mbaki siri zaidi, misa zi kujua au, au minendo kwa mganga, wele kwa mganga, siri yaki mwenyewe. Kwa swala halipo serikalini, kila mtu wanashinda kwa pawa yake, ya wananchi wake, wanavo mkubali. The East African country imposed a ban on witchcraft early this year to try to stop a trade in albino body parts used in spells and charms claiming to bring luck and wealth as the United Nations warned of a marked increase in their tax. Tanzanians Home Affairs Minister urged politicians to be wary of promises from witch doctors to help them secure victory in the general election. The law by itself cannot stop it and even our warnings to the public to the leaders, to business communities. We'll not stop it. Albinos face attack in many parts of Africa, but kidnappings, attacks and killings are more common in Tanzania. At least 75 albinos who lack pigment in their skins, hair and eyes, including children, have been killed in Tanzania. Many of them were hacked to death. Which doctors will pay as much as 75,000 US dollars for a full set of albino body parts, according to a Red Cross report? It was not until this year that President Jakaya Kikwete vowed to stamp out the practice he said brought shame to his country, imposing a ban on witchcraft and with police arresting over 30 witch doctors in recent months to stop the attack. Aaron Cheng, K Tennis. All right, so let's take a look at the day's sporting highlights. Standard Chartered Marathon Nairobi continued with its reputation of having no past winners successfully defend their crown as Joshua Kipkorir and Elizabeth Rukomoy emerged this year's winners walking away with 1.5 million shillings. The marathon, dubbed Seeing is Believing, also saw Patrick Kipnyeno and Purity Jabi win the 21-kilometer race. race. Robinson of Kenya reports. <laughs> More than 20,000 participants braved the cold Nairobi morning weather as they turned out Sunday for the 2015 Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon. With the marathon having the reputation of giving young and upcoming marathoners a chance to launch their careers, today was no exception. 
After the start gun was sounded, it was time to push aside those who came for the fun run. A serious contender launched the search for the 1.5 million bounty at the tape of that 42 kilometer race. The men's race was a tight affair from the start, but with the meandering course, the leading pack separated themselves after 28 kilometers. Making his marathon debut, Joshua Kipkori star shone the brightest as he crossed the line in a time of 2 hours, 13 minutes and 25 seconds. Joshua Kipto was second while Hilary Kiplimo was third. There was, however, confusion after Julius Njogu was disqualified after finishing second, following claims that he did not start the race with the rest of the athletes. In the women's race, first-timer Elizabeth Rukomoi was a cut above her compatriots as she cast the tape in a time of 2 hours, 29 minutes, 32 seconds. Kemoi Rono was second as Riono Tukai Chemtai finished third. I told my tactics young while in Yambio Sipik and Bele, relax Kwanuma. You're a cancer for relaxers. Dia Leo Minona Nimsuri Sana Kwangu, Kosababu Nimeko Wina Yai Marathon, Sikana Tarajan Tawini Marathon Lagini Nimeshukurzana Kosababu Nimewi. In the 21 kilometer category, Patrick Kipiniano strolled to victory ahead of his compatriots in a time of 1 hour 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Nicholas Kipchirchir was second. In the ladies' category, Machako's half marathon winner Purity Jebichi clinched victory, while Ndakaini half marathon winner Pauline Kori Kwang finished second. I'm a competitive kid because hapa na fikiri kila mtu alikuwa me prepare kukuja hapa. Yeah. Wilfred Kimite won the 10 kilometer race, while Kenneth Koech was second. For a majority of the 20,000 people that took part in this year's race, Theirs is not for the 1.5 million that is at the end of the race, but for a reason to smile as a champion for the Seeing is Believing campaign. Robinson Okenye, KTN Sports. All right, so let's take a look at some of your feedback tonight. Obed Mutua, you say awesome coverage of the Tanzania Zanzibar elections. Kudos, thank you for that. Mulash Mojawalamu, you say that witchcraft doomed the mind of primitive leaders. Huondio Ukiritimba. Um, and then I want to read some more. Daniel Osiem Ondere, you say, tribalism and greed are the Kenyan vices that differentiate between Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, Martin, great coverage as Tanzania decides. Kudos to the team. Thank you very much uh, for that, your feedback. Um, and then there was another one here. Erasta Soyaro, you believe CCM in Tanzania is in for a shock? We'll wait and see as the results start trickling in tomorrow from the National Electoral Commission in Tanzania. <coughs> Excuse me, Marik Youth Group, you say you hope Kenyans are watching. 2017 is not too far away. Um, here's one, Gideon Wariyama, you say, wonderful. A nation with over 20 million voters closing the polls by 4 p.m. Kudos, Tanzania. Keep your views coming in. We will not stop our coverage until uh, all the results are in. The hashtag we're using all week long is Transition in Tanzania. Thank you for watching our bulletin tonight, this election Sunday. From Nairobi here at the KTN News Center, it's good night from me. My name is Yvonne Okwara Matole. We'll see you again tomorrow on Bottom Line and indeed on KTN Prime as we continue with our coverage of East Africa in a way only we can. Stay with KTN News to get the whole story. Good night.